morning, dear learners. Today, our objective is uses to appropriate language for a specific discipline. Here's the term that you need to remember. Language is a noun, which means the principal method of human communication, consisting of words used in structured and conventional way and conveyed by speech, writing, or gesture, as defined from Oxford languages. Language is an academic text from various disciplines. What is academic language? Academic language represents the language demand of the school or academics. Academic language includes languages in textbooks, in classrooms, on tests, and in each discipline. It is different in vocabulary and structure from the everyday spoken English of social interactions. Its type of communication, to be both academic and social, has its own purpose, and neither is superior to it. Academic vocabulary is used in academic disciplines to teach about content of discipline. Say, for example, a water table is different than periodic element table. Before taking chemistry, for example, some students know the technical words used in chemistry, while others do not. The teaching of the vocabulary and subject-specific terminology has to address that need. Teaching academic language can be challenging because struggling readers and English learners do not always know the vocabulary used to learn specific academic terms or key concepts. Academic structure also includes the established way of organizing writing, which can affect how one reads in discipline. Separate genre, genres, paragraph, sentence structure, level of text difficulty, perfect intended audience, overall organization, and knowledge of the outside resources for the text all affect how writes and reads in that discipline. A determining the language used in the academic text from various disciplines, we be reminded of the following. First, identify the text and then analyze the genre, academic structure, and academic vocabulary. Take, for example, a lab report for chemistry requires different academic structure and vocabulary than a newspaper article for social studies or a food recipe for a home economics. Second, is identify and analyze the explicit instruction or distraction concerning the text, and say multiple models if necessary. Say, for example, deconstruct a word problem in algebra that requires different academic language from deconstructing a proof in geometry, a poem in English, or a musical symphony. Use textual evidence to support their ideas in speaking and writing. Then, use explicit scaffold, scaffolded instruction. It is a clear instruction, both auditory and visual, and make models of expected or possible objects. Then we have the fourth one, bring academic language to the surface. Always identify its usage to a particular discipline. What is discipline in language then? This discipline includes all the branches of linguistics that are needed to give complete description of normal and disorderly language such as phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, pragmatics, and discourse. Why use appropriate language for specific discipline? When writing, it is very important to use language that fits your audience and matches purpose. An appropriate language uses can damage your credibility, undermine your argument, and alienate your audience. What are the different aspects of using appropriate language? First, levels of formality. Writing a style that your audience expects that fits your purpose is key to successful writing. Second, in group jargon. Jargon refers to special language used by groups or like minded individuals. It's only used in group jargon when you are writing for members of that certain group. You should never use jargon for a general audience without first explaining it. Third, slang and idiomatic expression. Always avoid using slang or idiomatic expression in general academic work. Fourth, deceitful language and euphemism. Always
worries about using euphemism or words that fill the truth, such as the collateral damage, or the intended destruction of civilians and their property, and the other deceitful language. Fifth, bias language. Avoid uses using bias language, including language with a ra racial, ethnic group, or gender bias, or the language that is stereotypical. Let's explain further each of the one that enumerated a while ago. Levels of formality. The level of formality you write which should be determined by the expectation of your audience and your purpose. For example, if you are writing a cover letter for a job application or a college academic essay, you would write in formal style. If you are writing a letter to a friend, writing something personal, or even writing something for a humorous or special interest magazine when informal writing is expected, you would use a more informal style. Formality exists on a scale. In the example below, a letter of application to a known colleague can result in a semi-formal style. Take for example, for formal, we tend to an unknown audience. I am applying for a receptionist position advertised in the local paper. I am an excellent candidate for the job because of my significant secretarial experience, good language skills, and sense of organization. For semi formal, we tend to well known individual. I am applying for the receptionist position that is currently open in the company. As you are aware, I have worked as a temporary employee with your company in this position before. As such, I not only have experience and knowledge of this position, but also already understand the company's needs and requirements for this job. Then, the informal one, which is incorrect. Hi, I read in the paper that y'all were looking for receptionist. I think that I'm good for that job because I've done stuff like it in the past. Am I good with the words and am incredible where organized? So, if you're going to compare the three examples, always use the formal one because it is the appropriate construction. Then we have group jargon. As what I said a while ago, a term jargon refers only in a group or specialist language to a small group or like minded individuals. This term terminology is usually specialized in the function of the group and will be used by among group members as a sign of belonging, status, and for keeping out outsiders. Take for instance, individuals who study linguistics will use words like quantifier, voiceless, w dental, fricative, diglosia, intensifier, minimal pair, and metonymy. Sinan linguist. These words have different meanings or no meaning at all. If you are writing for a general audience, even a general academic audience, you should avoid using in group jargon without explanations. Overloading with your audience with words they do not understand will not help you achieve your purpose. For example, if you are writing a paper explaining concept in linguistics to an audience of non-linguists, you might introduce and explain a few important terms. But you wouldn't use those terms without an explanation or in any way your audience wouldn't understand. Then we have slang and idiomatic expression. You should always avoid using slang. Words like y'all, yeah, and school, or in dramatic expression like bosom was lag, spells the beans, if something smells squishy, and formal academic writing. These words makes your writing sounds informal and hence less credible. Furthermore, for non-native speakers of English, these expression, expressions may prove more difficult to understand because of the non-literal nature. Times do exist, however, where the use of slang and idiomatic expressions are appropriate. Think about you, who your audience is, what they expect, and how the use of these words may help or hinder your purpose. If you are writing a very informal or humorous piece, slang or idiomatic expression may be appropriate. Then we have deceitful language and euphemism. 
You should avoid using it in language whose purpose is to set fault. If Muslim are terms that attempt to cover up what which wrong, unethical, taboo, or harsh. Here are some examples from the military. Pacification. The act of forcefully exerting outside government over a previously autonomous people. Friendly fire, being shot up unintentionally by your own allies. Collateral damage, extraction of property and killing of innocent civilians during war efforts. Sunshine units, a term for a power plant that is leaking radiation into surrounding areas. Then we have complex or confusing language. Language can also be deceitful if it's overly complex or confusing. Confusing language is deliberately concreted, created complex, and is used to downplay the truth or to evade responsibility. Here is an example. The acquisition of the pollution permits by individuals and corporations that produce toxins has now been allowed by the recently amended Clean Air Act of 1990. Institution of permit simplifies and clarifies obligations for business and industry making environment protections more accessible for their constituents. The government and the environment, Environmental Protection Agency, Agency will be greatly assisted in their endeavors by monitoring the release of all substances and having the substances listed on one individual permit. And that give an example, although this paragraph makes it seem like this passage of the Clean Air Act is helping the environment, the EPA and the federal government, in reality, all it is doing is explaining the new permit system that allows permit holders to release pollutants into the environment. Then we have group terminology. Depending on your purpose, however, some terms that may consider euphemism may be appropriate or even sanctioned by groups that they affect. For example, it is more correct to say persons with disability or differently abled persons than to call someone handicapped, crippled, or even disabled. In these cases, it is important to use what is considered correct by the group in question. Then we have stereotypes and bias language. Bias language frequently occurs with gender, but can also offend groups of people based on sexual orientation, ethnicity, political interest, or race. Stereotype language. Stereotype language is any that assumes or stereotype about a group of people, for example. Don't assume a common stereotype about blonde women. Here's an example. Incorrect. Although she was blonde, Mary was still intelligent. Look at what's the revised one. Mary was intelligent. Then we have gender bias language. Writing without gender bias is sound ineffective. You should always consult your professional or disciplinary community's gender or imagine what is appropriate to your rhetorical audience or gender. Writing without gender bias language is necessary for the most audience. <laughs> Here are some generic names. Example, original, mankind, alternative, humanity, people, human being, method, man's achievement, alternative, human achievement, then man-made instead, use synthetic, manufactured, machine-made, then the common man. Instead, use the average person or their people. Then we have man, the stockton. Instead, you stop the stockton. Then we have nine man eyes. Instead, you nine stop eyes. For occupations, example, chairman. Instead, you coordinator of a committee or a department, moderator of a meeting, presiding officer, head, or chair. For businessmen, Use instead business executive, business person. For fireman, use instead firefighter. For mailman, use mail career. For steward and stewardess, learn flight attendant instead. And many more. Appropriate pronoun usage. Because English has no generic singular or common sex, 
though none had used he, his, in him in such expression, as the students need his pension. Benito said with personified the judge, the critic, the executive, the author, and so forth, as may be used in the pronoun he. We are subtly conditioning ourselves against the idea of female judge, critic, executive, or author. There are several alternative approaches for ending the exclusion of women that results from pervasive use of masculine pronouns. We can see the pronoun, plural, instead. For example, give each student his paper as soon as he finish. For the alternative, give students their paper as soon as they are finished. Reward to eliminate gender problems. Example, the average student is worried about his grade. Instead, use the average student is worried about grades. Replace the masculine pronoun with one, you, or sparingly he or she as upper brain. Example, if the student has satisfied with his performance in the pretest, he took the post-test. Instead, use the given example. A student who was satisfied with his or her performance in the pretest took the post-test. Or alternate male and female examples and expression. Be careful not to confuse the reader. The regional. Let each student participate. Has he a chance to talk? Should he feel left out? Instead, use let each student participate. Has she had a chance to talk? Could he feel left out? Thank you for listening. I hope that you've learned something from our lesson.